Now it's a tad bit cold here this morning at Four Golf in Chester, minus two, and uh, probably see my breath. But anyway, it isn't going to stop us. We're going to carry on the search of the ultimate clubs for average golfers. Right, so let me explain what do I mean by ultimate clubs for average golfers. What I've found in recent weeks in the videos that I've done is they've been, first of all, well received and thank you for all the comments and people who've been getting involved. And it's largely been based around seven hybrids, seven woods, and a reality check, to be quite honest with you, in that uh, how many clubs do we avoid putting in the bag and it could be a massive help for us. And I think, yet again, I've stumbled across something I think could be a major help for most average golfers. Right, so first of all, I'll start by asking a question. Which head type would you prefer? So a hybrid, or in this case, a five wood? And the question is, big or little? What gives you the most confidence at address? And I think for most golfers, they're probably gonna choose the five wood. So comments down below, first of all, big head, big head or little head, which would you prefer at address? Now, once that question's answered, for me at least anyway, and I'm going on the base of, I think most people are gonna choose the five wood, and uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But for me, on a personal level, I would much rather see that bigger profile at address. I, in fact, play the mini driver because of the same principles that we're gonna apply here. Shorter shaft, but still a relatively big club head. Gives me confidence at address in terms of the size of club head, but more control in terms of the shaft. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna take the shaft out of the hybrid, and I'm gonna put it into the five wood. And I'm gonna see how much greater control do we get in terms of dispersion, in terms of me finding the middle of that club face. How does it impact on performance? And could this be another club that could be a massive help in the bag of many average golfers? Right, so we'll start with the first and most obvious thing and we talked about was length of shaft and uh, roughly speaking, I would say, and I haven't got the technical information on this, but putting them head to head, there is about two inches difference between the shaft that you would find normally on the five wood and the shaft that I've got in, which is the hybrid shaft. And it's a significant difference in length and control is or I, at least I think one of the big things in terms of control, I'd much rather it's a pitching wedge than a three iron, and that's largely due to the fact that I've got a much shorter shaft in hand. So surely that same thing is going to apply in terms of hybrid into five wood. And what difference will it make? I have no idea in terms of performance, and I will get numbers for both, so we've got some kind of... Uh, comparable at the end of all this but the whole point is and I think it goes back to almost like the Deschambault the Cobra one length issue is by having these shorter shafts how much greater control does it give us and for me uh, without swapping the shafts back out straight away standing over this club with that larger profile because the bigger deal for me is why put the shorter shaft in the hybrid and not into the five wood in terms of or vice versa why have the smaller head in the hybrid What's the logic in the smaller head? Maybe a bit more versatility, maybe a bit more playable from rough, that kind of things. But for me, if I'm looking to play this from a tee or from a tight lay on the fairway, a long shot, then for me, that club sat at address. I know when I say club, the head profile, the bigger the head, the more confidence it's given me. The more chance that I think I ain't going to miss this thing, I'm going to put at least get club head on board. But that short control, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, as I've said with the, um, with the wall length stuff, it's a little bit weird to get your head round that bigger head on top of the shorter shaft. But once you've done that, I mean, to me, it just feels like, I don't know, I don't feel I can do too much wrong with this, but... Uh... Oh, it's a ball hand. I always start off the very first ball on the camera. I don't know whether I just get time and uh, slow things down, just get tempo a little bit nicer. That was a really nice struck ball. And that's the big thing for me. I'm going to hit a number of balls and obviously we'll get data and see what it does because that's the thing with this one. It is going to be data-led. But it's also, aside from that, it's a mental thing, isn't it? It's how much we can take from it in terms of confidence. 
if this ball is, I'm expecting it to be in around the 200 mark, and if this ball is carrying 200, but I've got confidence that I can hit that ball, that I can find a fairway, that I've got control, then maybe it's not data-led. Maybe it's all about what's in between the ears. But uh, first ball was fantastic. Are you allowed to say that about your own golf shots? Well, it was. Um, can I get a ball to bounce on the tee? So, yeah, these are from, uh, uh, that's another point to mention. Playing from a little short tee at the moment. But it feels, again, so much confidence. That bloody neck. Maybe in the bag, this thing. Out there on top of one another, trust me. Uh, really easy to hit. Great ball flight. But the biggest thing at this stage is about confidence. Stood at address. Short club in hand. How would I feel stood on a tight par four with that in hand? I can tell you already, I'd be feeling pretty good and feeling pretty confident. But how much do we lose in terms of numbers? And what did I get with this? compared to what I would get with a 500 with the regular shafting. I'll carry on it and some golf balls, and then we'll compare the two bits of data. And could this be a secret weapon that could find its way into many average golfers' bags? Based on them two shots, the answer would be yes. Let's see if we can get a hat-trick. I've got no words for that. Jesus. I've impressed myself. Right, we're going to finish this one off back in the warmth because there's no way I'm staying in there any longer than I have to. It's blinking freezing. Anyway, this is part data-led, but then I think there's an element of it that we've got to consider, which is about what's between the ears as well. So I think there's two elements to this, and there's no right or wrong. But here's the data. First of all, the numbers that I achieved using the shorter shaft in the five-wood head. What I like about it is taking out shots number two and three, two and three being number one at the very top, so two and three, ball speed's very, very consistent, as was club head speed, as was spin number, as was carry, we get the picture, as was pretty much everything. Um, so it's very, very consistent in terms of its performance. So spinning at three and a half thousand revs, uh, 205 carry on average and there was not a lot between them at all like I said shot three in particular dropped out a little bit and we got a little bit of extra club head speed on shot seven which meant it got it up to a 212 carry but I think the numbers like I said this is not about numbers this would be about in terms of the number it would be about where does it fit within your bag this for me is more about consistency of strike control and confidence at address but let's compare it to what I would have achieved. So I then put the, the regular shaft back in, if you like, into the five wood. And you see straight away that club head speed goes up naturally because of that longer club uh, length, shaft length that is. Uh, so we gain quite considerable sort of four mile an hour. Um, ball speed went up then up to almost touching 140. And again, very, very consistent. I mean, it's a great performing uh, five wood. This is another option for in the bag. There's no doubt about it. Uh, three six spin again very good that carry so all this club head speed ball speed is relative then to the carry at 215 um, and the launch angles and land angles and peak heights were, were similar um, and again relative I would say to all those other numbers so we've got a difference in yardage uh, we've got a difference in ball speed or club speed rather and then into uh, into what is ball speed but that's all really come from the shaft length so we've not seen anything, but the final thing we've got to go into is dispersion. And that was the key one for me. So there's a dispersion chart in front of you now. Um, these purple dots is that of the, obviously the longer is of the five wood with the regular shafting. I mean, I wish that I carried on hitting a few more of the five woods, to be honest with you, because I sort of obtained data that I was comfortable with um, and then moved on to hitting the, uh, with the shorter shaft. So it was kind of I, I think there would have been a wider spread you can see there's two down the left hand side uh with the five wood but there's a much more compact area using the shorter shaft but there was a lot more shots hit i think if, if we'd have hit more balls i think this would have broadened the gap a bit wider to be honest with you because obviously i hit a few to warm up and believe me Although I think the consistency is relevant in the numbers that you can see there in terms of the dispersion chart, I think it actually would have been perhaps a bit broader if we'd have used a broader set of numbers. But to be honest with you, it wasn't as vast as I thought it would be. I also think that this is key to the second element of what I've mentioned throughout. It's about confidence. It's about confidence at address. That's a major, major thing for me because in the numbers 
I was comfortable using either club, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, however, when I stood at address, and I mentioned it, as soon as I put it in my hands at address uh, during the testing, it's a game changer in terms of how confident you feel. I mean, I don't really know why this club doesn't exist, so that shorter shaft but bigger head profile. And in some ways, the Epic Flash Hybrid, they have actually done that. It is a much bigger profile. It is a bit of a beast in terms of how it performs in terms of yardage distance as well. And it's gone closer to becoming more of a fairway wood, if you ask me. So it's more about, I think, what the test tells us is, yes, this is a great club that you could have in your bag, shorter shaft in a five wood head. Um, but it's all about what fits in the bag, what gives you the most confidence. And again, going back to the videos that we've looked at of late, uh, what is it for me? 205 carry on average. Is that a club that I'd want to put in my bag? If it is and it fits, then this is a great option. And another great option, I think, for average golfers in general, looking at shorter shafts, greater control, more ability to find that sweet spot. That's what it's all about, I think, that I've learned in these last few weeks with the likes of the hybrids, the seven hybrids, the seven woods, five woods with shorter shafts. It's all about clubs that are more suitable for our ability and gives a better chance of finding that center of the club face. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. I am gonna warm up a little bit more, have a cup of coffee, and uh, I'm on to video number two. I'll see you soon.